Welcome to another how-to video from Bokespray.com. In this video, I'm going to be discussing what we call store product pests. So stored product pests would include a list of beetles, moths, weevils. These are pests that typically are found in the pantry, maybe a cabinet, and in some cases throughout the home. In all cases, these insects get into the home by some type of a food item which is introduced, something purchased at a big box store, a grocery store, maybe a bag of seed at a lawn and garden shop. But typically, these pests come in with, say for example, dog biscuits, maybe some cat food, any type of dry pet food. They can come in through any kind of baked good box material that includes flowers. Pasta is a very common route that they will use to get inside our homes. Of course, nuts, as I already mentioned, flour, that's a very popular box that might have something inside there. Any type of cookie, cracker, and of course, all the cereals. These are all food items which are processed and then boxed up. Typically, they have bags inside there so that inside these containers, you will find sealed plastic bags, and yet they will readily get infested with some type of an insect. So again, the, the short list of beetles and moths and weevils can include things, for example, in the weevil family, something like rice, wheat, grain, maybe a corn weevil. In the beetle family, things like biscuit beetles, bread, lauder, cabinet, drugstore, confused flour, sawtooth beetles. These are all very, very popular in the home. And the moths are typically Indian meal moths, some type of a pantry or almond moth. These all thrive on stored product. And from the stored products, when we bring them home, we introduce them to our cabinets and our pantries, our kitchens, any place where we store these items. And then as the life cycle is completed inside these containers, either the larvae come out or in most cases, it's the adults that you're seeing. And this video will explain how you can deal with a problem where you're seeing one phase of the life cycle. Typically, it's the adult. So most of our callers and most of our inquiries regarding these pests will be that they're finding adults, in some cases, on the food item, in some other cases, in a cabinet or a pantry, and then in the worst cases throughout the home. So there's typically three levels of a problem and we're going to address how you can contend with any one of those levels. So you will not need to know what species you have and more importantly, you don't even know or have to know really where the source was. Ideally finding the source, whatever it is that led them to get into the house, that's always a good thing. But in Virtually every case that we're dealing with, the customers have called us because they have an ongoing problem even after the infested food or stored product was removed. And this is where people get confused. They don't seem to understand, how can this be? How can I still have these adults foraging around? I've gotten rid of the source. Well, the source has nothing to do with why you have a problem. So I'm going to get into the details of how that is and then explain options for treating and it will depend on which level you have. So we're going to go with three levels of problems and each level will require at least one product and in some cases a combination of products so that you can end the life cycle for good. So now I'm going to get into the details of how you can go about doing a treatment after you've identified that you have some type of an issue. As I explained before, our callers and the emails that we get are people who are reporting some type of activity. 
in virtually all cases, they are seeing adults, and in some situations, the adults are active in a cabinet or a pantry, but in many of the problems that are being reported, the adults are active throughout the home. So how do you know what products to use and where to use them? Because oftentimes you're seeing the activity where there's no food around. So let's address that. Let's give you a game plan on how you can proceed based on where you're seeing activity. So the first step or the first phase of any problem is when the food item is brought home. I'm holding this little box because it's small and it's easy for me to explain using this. Let's say you bring home a stored product and it has something living inside this gap or inside the box. The life cycle for all of these pests, the weevils, the moths, and the beetles, is egg, larvae, which hatches out of the egg, the larvae feeds, and then it goes into the third stage, which is the uh, pupa. And in the pupa stage, it undergoes metamorphosis to emerge as the adult. In almost all cases, people are reporting adults, and they're seeing them randomly throughout the home. If you bring something home, and you're fortunate enough to use it within a day or two and discover some type of cocoons inside here or active larvae crawling around, you're going to get rid of the box and that is probably going to save you having a problem develop. Getting rid of the source immediately when it's first brought into the home can often stave off any type of a problem. But if these boxes and the food items that you bring home are allowed to sit for long periods of time, what happens is that the larvae which are feeding inside here then spin their cocoons and undergo metamorphosis to become an adult. Now adults are not smart. When adults emerge, all they do is go out seeking a mate and after they find a mate, the females will start to lay eggs. They don't do this thinking. In other words, they're not programmed to identify great places and they certainly can't make decisions. So they will forage around randomly and oftentimes end up in other parts of the cabinet, outside the cabinet, maybe in the kitchen or dining room, and in some cases, other places inside the house. So where you're finding adult activity is where you need to focus your treatments. In this case, and we'll take this as phase one, or call this phase one, I should say. Let's assume that you've identified a box that had a problem, but you identified it after you had the box for a few months, and the only reason why you identified it is because you were seeing adults moving around in the pantry. So how should you go about treating a problem like this? Again, the premise is that you've only seen adults in the pantry, not any place on the floor or in that kitchen or in the room surrounding the pantry, only in the pantry. Well, the first step is to remove everything from the pantry and then do a thorough inspection on the individual items. What you're looking for is anything that has activity, anything you're not sure about, store in a clear bag. Any type of a plastic bag will work. And within a few weeks, if you don't see anything coming out active inside the bag, those food items are probably safe and you can keep them. Obviously, you can discard everything and start anew. That's clearly an option. But if you're unsure about something, it doesn't mean that you have to throw it away. You can store it in a plastic bag and observe it for a series of weeks. And if nothing comes out, then it's probably okay to keep. So again, premise one, there's activity only in the cabinet. Your cabinets are now empty and you've discarded anything that you thought was infested. And now you're wondering how should you go about treating? Well, the best product, and really the only thing you need to use right now, would be the FSMP. This aerosol is very aggressive. It is fast acting, and it uses an oil base for a solvent system, which means that it penetrates cracks and crevices really well. It comes with a crack and crevice straw, and it will kill all stages. So when you're spraying, you're going to be killing the eggs, you're going to be killing the larvae, the pupa, any adults. Basically, every place you apply it, if there are insects hiding, they will die. 
So if you thoroughly treat all the cracks and crevices inside your pantry, and that was the only place where adults were active, you could conceivably eliminate the entire problem with just this can alone, and that's all you'd need to do. Now for peace of mind, if you wanted to then spray the adjoining rooms, that's fine. Focus on baseboards, maybe around some cabinets, if for some reason you thought there might be something there, it won't hurt anything. But keep in mind, this is a very unique formulation because it is oil-based. Virtually all aerosols that are on the market are water-based and will not affect eggs and they will not affect the uh, pupa. This product will kill everything quickly, so it is a great item for fast control, a uh, type of control that ends the problem so that it doesn't grow and get more out of control. Now, the second phase or the second level of a problem that we get calls about are when the insects have left the uh, food item that was originally infested and they've migrated into the cabinets, but they've also left the cabinets. And now they're active, say, in the kitchen or the room where the cabinet or pantry is located. In that situation, you still have to do everything that was listed in the in the phase one type of a problem, meaning that you need to remove everything from the cabinets and pantry and do the treatment with the FSMP. You can then, or you need to then, treat that room as well. And the FSMP can be used for that situation. It's not the best for extensive treating because you're probably gonna use a can or two. So from an efficiency point of view, you'll be better served incorporating one of the concentrates that you see here. The concentrates are mixed with water and are then sprayed on baseboards. And both of these are extremely different from the FSMP, and this is important to understand. So once the adults have foraged out and they're roaming around aimlessly, if you go out there and treat with FSMP and you could treat every square inch of every spot in the home, you would kill everything and the problem would be resolved. But the reality is that that's not gonna happen. You're gonna miss some areas. And any places where you miss, and there are stages that are allowed to continue living and thriving, they will avoid where the FSMP is applied because this is highly repellent. So any place that you miss, if there's something living, they will continue to thrive. The Bythor and the Alpine are both non-repellent. What that means is when you spray this on baseboards, on floor mats, carpeting, around windows, any place where you apply this material, it will not chase them. It does kill relatively quickly, but after it dries, it's going to remain active and insects will readily crawl through it, pick up a lethal dose and die over time. So the advantage of using this in the open areas, say the kitchen that adjoins the pantry where the problem started, is that you can get control without having to spray everything and be so thoroughly covering like you need to be if you're using the FSMP in the pantry alone. So for phase two situations, consider bringing in one of these concentrates. The Alpine mixes one of these packs to a half gallon of water and the Bythor mixes at the rate of 1.5 ounces per gallon of water. So one packet for half a gallon of water. If you have a very small area to treat, that would be fine. If you have many, many rooms, the Bythor is going to be way more economical. This is a quart and will make you approximately 20 gallons of finished material, and it covers a wide array of insects, as does the Alpine. But the Alpine is an individual uh, mixture, meaning that you're using this packet per half gallon of water, and you could quite conceivably could go through two or three of these packets to solve your problem. But if it's very small and you want to just supplement the FSMP, the Alpine is a good option. On the third level of the third phase that I'm about to get into, the Bythor is almost always going to be the better option because it's just more efficient. Now, we've established in phase two type problems that you need to use the aerosol in the pantry, focused areas where you think the source was originally, and then spray baseboards and other areas with the Bythor or Alpine. At the same time, you should get some of the growth regulator this is essentially a protein that you add to either the Alpine or the Bythor. And this product is also non-repellent. It's a protein-based concentrate, which is essentially a 
juvenile growth hormone. And when the larval stages are exposed to that, they will not develop properly or become reproducing adults. So you can end the cycle with just this alone. You might ask, well, why do I need to use this if I'm using these non-repellents? And the quick answer is, well, technically you don't. But what the growth regulators do is that they have this unique ability of translocating. So when you spray the FSMP, it goes exactly where you spray it. When you apply Bythor or Alpine, it stays where you spray it. If you have the growth regulator added to either the Alpine or the Bythor, after you spray, days later, the growth regulator translocates, and that's because it's highly volatile, so it starts to move around. And this grants you extra coverage without having to spray everything. You can literally find this product dispersed in many, many feet away from where you first sprayed it. And this is a huge advantage because if there were eggs in these other locations and a few weeks later or a month or two later they hatch, the growth regulator will control and impact those larval stages so they can't become reproducing adults. So basically, the growth regulator is like an insurance policy. We sell this in little one ounce jars, four ounce jars, 16 ounce jars, all different sizes, and you'll see it listed below this video. In fact, all these products you'll see listed below the video, not the Jiffy uh, corn muffins. That will set aside, but the treatment products will be listed below the video. So in summary, for phase two problems, consider getting one of the sprays, one of the concentrates that you'll be able to spray with water in addition to the FSMP. You could conceivably treat with just the FSMP, and if you do, if you're tackling more than a pantry and some cabinets, get a couple of cans. If you're inclined to get a small amount of spray, the Alpine should do the job. If you've got a large area to spray, get the Bythor. And at the same time, consider getting some of the growth regulator to add to those mixtures so that you have your built-in insurance policy. Now let's move on to a phase three problem, which as you've already surmised, it's basically a phase two, but to the extreme that you're seeing them all over the house. And that could include upstairs in bedrooms, it could be in bathrooms, it really doesn't matter. At this point, what's happened is that you have one of the aggressive type uh, pantry pests, say for example, an Indian meal moth, which can fly around. And when that happens, they can fly pretty much to any part of the home and lay eggs. Many of the others can do the same thing. You know, drugstore beetles are very aggressive. Cigarette beetles, very aggressive. They tend to move around quite a bit. Whereas the weevils, like rice weevils and maize weevils, they tend to stick close to where they hatch or where they come from their original source. So you don't get them translocating quite as much. But the point is, in phase three, if you're experiencing or seeing the adults throughout the entire home, you really have to do the FSMP in the cabinets and pantries where the source originated, and then treat the rest of the home with either the Alpine or Bythor with some of the growth regulator added. And this way, you'll have in place a complete protection, basically a treatment that will handle anything active in any part of the home. Now let me point out that these other products, actually all three of these products, the FSMP, the Alpine, and the Bythor, will control virtually any insect. And the great thing about the Bythor and the Alpine is that, again, it's non-repellent. So once you've got these products in place, insects that come into the home will not be aware of this treatment. That means that they'll walk through it, pick up a lethal dose, and die. So using these products every two or three months when you don't have a problem is a very smart preventative treatment that you can do and it will work on virtually any insect. So they, they will control things like roaches and ants, termites, bed bugs even. The point is having a placement or a treatment in place really helps and can prevent future problems. In the case of the stored product pests, you really have to go into the other rooms and get those kind of treatments done if you want to end it for good. So in summary, phase one treatments where it's limited to just the pantry or a cabinet 
or two, the FSMP will do the job. Just be very thorough and treat once with a follow-up, maybe two or three weeks later if you're seeing anything after that. Uh, in general, a very thorough initial treatment can eliminate the problem completely because it will kill all stages. But if you're seeing something two weeks later, that means you need to spray again. So bank on doing two treatments. That's typically what it takes. If you have a phase two or a phase three problem, do the FSMP in the cabinets and pantry, but then supplement it by using either the Alpine or the Bythor uh, in a pump sprayer and focus on treating baseboards and placemats and spot treating carpets. In some cases, you might have to treat some furniture because they readily will move into couches and sofas and they may need treatments. And lastly, adding some of the growth regulator to either the Alpine or the Bythor so that you have that insurance policy built in to the spray that you're putting out throughout the home. So thank you for watching this how-to video from BugSpray.com.